Today we're going to be doing a live walkthrough of the Phantom Muspa. I'm going to be using basically max gear minus a ZCB. I really want to use a ZCB, but don't run in the budget. One trick you can do is equip the buckler in your offhand slot. Gives you an extra inventory space. I like to bring the blowpipe for the special attack. <coughs> the heal. Um, you can also use the ACB special attack to speed up the prayer phase. But it's really subjective on when you want to use it and which one you want to use. My quick prayers are Prey Range and Rigor. Got the Max Cape on, um, so it benefits me both with Mage and Range. And it gives me a teleport home, it's also the bank. It's better than having it in the inventory, and I'm not going to be able to talk while I set up the kill. So here we go. Summon the Thrall, you want to summon it on that tile, because if you're any further, the Thrall has to walk up to the Musma to attack it which isn't ideal because you lose a tick. You want to kind of run in an L shape or diagonally to get away from the Muspa. As that creates the most distance between you and the boss. I always play with the game sounds on when I'm fighting this boss. This is one of the only bosses I actually play with game sounds on. Just because the audio cue is just incredible for praying mage at the right times. Around the first or second special, I always resummon my thrall. Pray, I use my prayer orb there because it's quicker, uh, closer to the boss. And you're just gonna have to watch what I do here because I have to. <laughs> I can't talk and uh, do this phase at the same time. You don't have to click every time. It's just a habit that I do. As you can see, I'm using a Mark of Darkness and Greater Corruption to make this phase a little more consistent. Uh, I didn't even equip the Buckler. Nice. Because if you don't hit your specs, it takes forever. You want to be uh, one tile away here, or even right up next to the boss, so you can get that faster death animation. And you want to walk under an attack like that, I wasn't in a situation to lose ticks at that point, but if you are, that can prevent you from losing ticks. See, I just lost a tick there because I thought that I was going to be able to kill it before he spawned more spikes, but I wasn't, so I just lost a tick, but it's all good. And if you don't have anything on the ground, you might as well leave and re-enter. <clears throat> to save time. I'm not going to have time to switch to my mage, uh, mage gear, so I'll just send a Tebow hit. If you run diagonal like that, you're most likely going to get sniped, or if he's approaching you diagonally, you're most likely going to get sniped. There are some guides that exist uh, with like tile markers and everything that show you how, how and where to run to be on the perfect 5 pick cycle every time. <clears throat> I like to freestyle it because it allows for some variety with the boss. Because if I know exactly where to click every time, I just feel like that's kind of boring. It makes the boss a little too cyclical. 
kind of like the variety of having to kite properly. And here I just remembered that I should summon a thrall. And it's not exactly on cooldown at the moment, but if you think about summoning a thrall, you might as well summon one. You get the magic XP, um, it's pretty cheap, and it's better than forgetting. Here I'm going to use the prayer orb, because it's quicker than going to my prayer book and then back. My phase here, so I have to run back behind him. Here. There's one tick behind there. And even on this phase, you want to run right up to him. You want to be in motion as he's phasing, so that way you leave the spike in your trail. You got to predict that, save some ticks, save some time. And on to the next. What I like about this boss is how farmable it is. Like, the run from the bank isn't that bad. Look for the color. And then summon your thrall as soon as you can, really. Yeah. I should probably come up with a better method for that corner there. He usually snipes me for some damage. Here, I'm just hovering. Because you, you knew he... I had a feeling he was going to switch there based on how much damage I had already done. And it's obviously better to attack with what he's weak to at the time. The DPS difference is quite significant. This is one of the most annoying parts of this fight, is when you do it too fast. And you have the moving spikes on you. And at the same time, you're trying to pass towards a safe spot. All right, we'll go, we'll go for the smite skip here. No, I don't think I'm gonna get it. Oh, I forgot to summon my god, god damn it! I forgot to um, resummon my thrall to prevent the overkill damage, or else that would have been pretty dope to get live. No. Send it to finish this phase. But, I mean, the damage does carry over, so that's nice. This would have been pretty sick to get a smart skip on video because it's pretty RNG dependent. You have to hit big. Oh, nice. You have to hit big kind of three times in a row. Basically, you have to hit big enough to bring it just to threshold of 130 then you have to hit big again to proc it and then you have to hit big again to um, kill it you know what i'm talking about if you know what happens during a smite skip and now i'm gonna stay until my supplies are gone <clears throat> and if there was loot on the ground <clears throat> i stay in the cave anyway because, I mean, the time you save by exiting and re-entering, sure, you do save a lot of time. But, I mean, the, 
The loot's on the ground, man. I'm here for it. Want to pick it up? If you're fast enough, there is time to pray augury. In that situation, uh, my prayer... I didn't get my augury prayer up in time. I still hit, but... In the beginning, there's always time. Honestly, when you're switching, there's, there's always time to go to switch to the optimal. See, like, there's... That was... I might have lost a tick there, but there was enough time to proc the transition and then change your gear to account for it. Same right there, like... Not gonna rush it. Oh, still fucked it up. You can kind of see my methods and then I'm kind of consistent with them. What I like about this boss is like, sometimes it's, see that, I, what I like about this boss is that the tips and tricks are consistent, like between kills almost exactly. Um, very little deviation. You're able to use the same tips and tricks for basically every kill. We're going to see how long this trip lasts. Uh, I left the... I left the... ranging potions on the ground. One of the limiting factors of a trip is your divine bastion, so... If I really wanted to prolong the trip, I would have stayed, kept those ranging potions for further use. There I was lazy. I moved, but I could have switched my gear to hit the melee phase with mage. But, I mean, it's a video game, man. You just make your decisions as you make them. All good, you don't need to be efficient every all the time. It's kind of silly because uh, I know quite a few people with Tebow only this boss, and they get like consistent like 245 times. And I do kind of like full try hard switching and only shave off like 20 seconds a kill. They don't even have to change their gear. <laughs> it's like. makes me feel silly for doing such a high effort for a trivial benefit. It's not really trivial because I do much prefer changing my gear and clicking fast and clicking hard, you know what I mean? We'll go for this might skip here, I'm going to try to remember. I totally fucked it up. At that point, I was just fighting for my life, man. Had to uh, stop with the commentary. It's probably not enough HP to finish the kill, especially with my pot running out. But I'm down to risk it. Let's go. Oh my god, I have Dust Charge. 
didn't even realize. Oh, I think I just looted the death rooms. Yeah. If you loot death rooms here, if you have my... Take a look. Take a look at my rune pouch. If you loot death runes, then you get death charge, which allows you 15 extra spec per kill. Which is pretty dope considering you could like spam blowpipe um, spec and basically heal back all the chip damage. There's like some trick to use accurate here and a three three uh three tick weapon. That's beyond my uh willingness. <laughs> Don't have time, so I'm gonna send a T brother. I could have predicted it, but it's all good. I can often skimp on the Helm switch. You have really press for time switching. I gotta run. Might not make the kill here. <clears throat> Unpotted. Taking massive chip damage. I do have a blowpipe spec though. Let's go. Why not? Accurate. Whatever. Get that. DPS. And you always want to go home first, then bank. <clears throat> that way you can eat an angler at the bank. And I guess you guys will see how I bank. Basically, anything that's not. Where the hell did that book go? Whatever. Basically, this whole part of the inventory can be banked. <clears throat> and then you just replenish from here. And then I bring some manta rays to save money, but I don't really give it too much thought. You could pre-pot at the bank, save yourself 10 HP from the divine, but not worth it in my opinion. I always right-click this because a lot of people I accidentally click to send stairs and sends them to Narnia. I mean, this is a pretty detailed <laughs> walkthrough of what I'm doing. Almost everything here is like calculated, pre-planned. Not trying to sound like a nerd, but this is like a pretty cyclical kind of grind, you know? One thing that I'm really missing is the VCB. I would love to have a VCB for a ruby spec here, or even like guaranteed. God damn it! Yeah, if you run up to him like that, you take damage. Guaranteed sapphire bolt specs is what I was gonna say. You always want to pray mage accordingly. When that happens, even if you phase him and whatnot, the attack still comes out sometimes, which is kind of weird. But, see, I just snuck in an accurate hit for a little extra DPS. If you hit him and he does that, it kind of resets how much damage he can take before he fa uh, changes his form again. I did not have time to switch there. I really only had one tick. Unless I predicted it. Not predicting it is honestly not that big a deal. Here you want to run like diagonal like that. You see how I'm like maximizing the um, horizontal and vertical distance by running 
not in a corner like fashion. You want to be in your best. Nice. You want to be. Oh, come on. That's gonna hurt. You want to be in your mess best range gear when you are ranging the boss. Oh, perfect. <laughs> you want to be in your best range gear when you are using your crossbow in the smite phase, <clears throat> and that's not because the special attack only rolls if you hit it's actually the it's actually not true the special attack will roll even if you don't hit and then you'll get the xp drop and they'll do that damage in pvp you need to have a successful accuracy roll in order for the proc the spec to even have a chance of proccing it's not true in pvm pre-switch I mess up the timing, but I'm gonna take damage here, but it's fine. I got a shark, got plenty of sharks on the ground, 100% spec. I'm in a good spot with HP. And as soon as you get a supply drop like this, you, like almost every time that happens, even if that happens once, your trip becomes, goddammit limited by your divine so this is probably going to be a 20 minute trip really thought he was going to phase there probably now If you attack him on the first tick, he becomes attackable. You can always smite. The cycle of praying range, praying mage, smiting will never be broken. Unless you mess it up. 79. One thing that is a little inconvenient about supply drops is that it makes it so there's no point in leaving. So now all these drops on the ground kind of chain me here and I have to wait out the respawn timer. Ultimately saves me time because I'm not banking. And I'm staying in here and I'm staying fighting the Muspa for longer. Um, but honestly, I'm not sure if the time saved banking adds up to more time saved uh, leaving and re-entering. I really don't think it does, you know, now that I'm thinking about it. <clears throat> it might be more worth to just leave. If there's loot on the ground. I would stay personally, but if there's supplies on the ground, think about it. How long does the rent to the bank take? From teleporting out of here, POHing and running to the bank and back. Let's say one minute, 30 seconds. And let's say you say 15 seconds every kill running out and running back. So 
that's four, five, six, six kills. You'd have to do six kills to equal the amount of time spent running to the bank. So the equivalent. So you would have to do six more kills. Hold on. All right, let me just inventory manage for a second. This is the part of the trip that gets real annoying. No, it's not even annoying. I'm being dramatic. The part that Takes up a lot of brain power, honestly. Because I really like to keep my inventory organized. I'm deciding what to put where. See, like, if phase, but you still want to pray mage because. That thing's still coming at you, even if he is in the middle of phasing. It's a little weird, but I understand. You know, the attack's still coming out. Gotta pray against it. Just because he's phased doesn't mean that the attack isn't still in the air. Another thing about this boss is that you really are chugging prayer potions here. These things aren't going to be solid by the time I phase it. Probably turn the commentary off. I'm kind of just vibing now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. Bye. And I got a Venator Shard. <clears throat> Same session. That's pretty cool. Only got two in 372 kill count. A little dry, but I'm not one of those people who complain about that shit constantly. You just saw me blow pipe spec the full melee. Hey man, you just saw me blow pipe spec and run into shards. Let's go. Anyway, I got a venator shard. Let's go, boys. Let's go. See that? It's real gaming right now. Watch this predict. Ooh, nasty. Oh my god. Okay, that's not that bad. I can fix that. Oh. 
Back to back. All good. That's me saying that's a clip. That's a clip. Here's a clip of me dying. Let someone do it. Let's go.